Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you and to thank you for being here and to say that you look great today. Um, first, I would like to take 15 seconds of your time to look at these images and to analyze them. Now I would like to take you back and think with me for a second. Can you imagine what happened? I know that I'm from a different country and you're from different states. Can you imagine what habits makes you different from each other in the class? Now I would like to, for you to think with me, is there a special event that you celebrate with your family? like Thanksgiving or Christmas each year that always happens each year together? Now what if you all of a sudden went to study abroad in a total different country and you could no longer join your family for these celebrations? How would you feel? Today, I would like to talk to you and to tell you how to overcome cultural differences. Culture is a very broad topic and culture is about our identity, it's about who we are and we must preserve who we are. And according to Cesar Chavez, preservation of one's own culture doesn't require contempt or disrespect for other cultures. So, today I would like to show you these two points. First, what is culture, and then how can we deal with different cultures? We will start with what is culture. Well, according to how, culture is a people's way of life. It's the sum of their learned behaviors, their attitudes, and material things. How keeps saying that culture is an unconscious framework which makes communication possible but intercultural conflict inevitable. In other words, the fact that you are from the same culture doesn't mean that you may not have misunderstanding or that you may not have conflicts. And continuing with Paul's words, he said that people are generally unaware of their cultural conditioning and the hidden differences in how we think, which creates barriers to cross-cultural understanding. Well, let me tell you a story about that. Uh, how many of you have seen stories about uh, movies or documentaries about Africa? Good. Can you imagine what image they try to pass of Africa? Do you remember seeing undeveloped countries with dark-skinned people like me walking half-naked, chilling with monkeys, <laughs> or having lions as pets? drinking water from the river, dancing all night around a bonfire. Well, I get pissed every time I see these movies unless they're talking about uh, Madagascar or The Lion King. So, people have to realize that it's, Africa is not about one culture. Africa is a continent with 52 countries and each of them has at least two cultures. My country, for example, has 18 states and we have at least six different languages spoken by region. So it's, Africa is about a lot of countries and not about one country. I would like to go to the second sub point which is elements of culture. We have to understand what exactly constitutes a culture and in these we will talk about language and values. Well what is language? Language is a system of symbols that makes, that allows members of a community to communicate with each other. And then we have values which are culturally defined standards of beauty, goodness, desirability, and they also support beliefs that people hold to be true. And I'll tell you a story about that. Um, I'm, how many of you are Christians or Baptists? Good. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Baptist, and I believe in God. I read the Bible, and I get excited every time I see people doing it naturally. 
and I met this uh, classmate from Saudi Arabia, and I always, I always learn not to mock other religious beliefs and to respect them. And I met him, and we were talking about how religious beliefs, and he told me that he believes in Allah, and I believe in God. He believes in Prophet Muhammad, and I believe in Jesus. So our stories were, were quite similar. And one thing that really excited me is that people from Saudi Arabia, they live their religion very disciplined. When it comes to time to pray, they pray, whether they're in the mall, whether they're in a football game, where, whenever they are, wherever they are, they pray. So that's who they are, that's their culture, that's what they learn, and that's what they pass to their future generations. So uh, now we're going to the second part. If you remember, we first talked about what is culture, and now, now Jerica, can you please read the second point? How can we deal with other cultures? How can we deal with different cultures? I would like to introduce to you two men. These men have contributed for the studies of culture, and they are Hofstede and Hall. Well, Hofstede is known by his five dimensions uh, of culture, in which he defines, he, he put five elements that we find in every culture and that can be found in different proportions in different cultures. And these elements are power distance, Dan, Jericho, please. Individualism. Individualism? Good. Then... Uncertainty of awareness. Yeah. See? Long-term orientation. Jordan? Long-term orientation. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, we have short time, so I can only speak about one of them. And I'll talk to you about power distance. And power distance is nothing more than the extent of which the community, the majority of the community, accept and expect that only a few people, only a few families are privileged enough to be rich or to be, to have access to the resources. And these can be found in a lot of Arab countries where you have a lot of people from the low, lower class and the middle class and there are just a few people from the high class, the people that have access to the resources. And I'll show you this table um, where you can find the other terms. But as we talked about power distance, I'll tell you like countries like Austria, which have low values of love, power distance, it means that the members of the society doesn't have that much sense of accepting that people from uh, like people from high class have more access to the resources. And as we see like the average value in USA, which means that uh, the members of the society actually compete and have equally access to the resources. And secondly, I will talk to you about how. How is the man, I think, I believe that it, it all started from him. And he defined it, he divided the culture in high context cultures and low context cultures. Well, what would be high context cultures? High context cultures are more relational cultures. Are they more collectivist, they're more intuitive and contemplative? They emphasize interpersonal relationship relationship. And for them the word counts a lot. And on the other hand, we have Low context cultures, which they are more logical, they're more linear, they're more action oriented, and they value more facts and directness. They depend more on language precision and legal documents. Let me give you an example of that. When I grow up, I want to be an entrepreneur. And let's imagine that I'm already 25 and I have the perfect financing for my job, but I just don't have the right place to put my, my business working. And then my brother, that lives in the same house, he has this property in a perfect location, downtown Miami, ready for rent. Well, what I do, I talk to him, I go to him and I say, I would like to rent your property. And I will pay the rent each month uh, for seven years, for example. And he says, okay, deal. In a high context culture, since we're more related, relational and 
the time counts a lot, uh, the word counts a lot, that conversation can mean that the deal is done. We can start, he trusts me, and my word counts more than any legal document. In a low context culture, it would require legal documents, it would require lawyers and term, discuss terms and conditions, not because he doesn't trust me, it's because it's their mentality. See? So, um, what I'm trying to say is that it's not about what is right or wrong. And uh, high context cultures can be defined, can be divided in time, space, reasoning, verbal messages, social roles, interpersonal relation, and social organization. You will see that in the handout I will give you in the end. Uh, but just to give you a brief thing, for example, if you see in this handout that I will give to you, according to the time, for example, in high context cultures, they are more, they lose schedules, the, the time is less tangible, which means that it's a natural thing. So we, we come to the end, uh, you will have a, a, a table like this and the, the, the part of the, end of the presentation you will have. We come to the end where, and now we see that we saw two points. We saw what is culture, and can you remember the second point? How can we overcome the Exactly. How can we deal with different cultures? And uh, we also saw how can we overcome cultural differences, especially in the last example I gave to you, which I said that it, sometimes it doesn't mean to be right or wrong. And I hope that with this skill, you now learn, you now know how to differentiate that sometimes it's not a person's bad intentions, for example, but it's just the, per the place where this person comes from and his cultural, his or her cultural background. Thank you for your time.